a lot of children here. And uh, we're the sort of school that thinks kids are pretty important. So I've got a question. Let's see who's brave enough to give me an answer. It's only for the kids. Grown-ups, you can go to sleep. This is only for the important people, only for the children. You're here to look at a school. How will you know if it's a good school? Yeah? Because it's an IB school. And you study in an IB school already. Okay. It's a big school. Yeah, look at the size of this. Can I your attention, please? Yeah. Oh. All the parents who are here from grade 1 to 5 are requested to proceed to the auditorium. I repeat, all the parents who are here for the session grade 1 to 5 are requested to proceed to the auditorium. Okay. Point for you, not all IB schools are the same. Okay? They're all a little bit different. Okay? Big school. Big school means lots of people, right? Lots of friends? Yeah. What else have we got? How about this intellectual guy here? What do you look for in a school? Full of sports, okay. We've got swimming pools everywhere. We've got swimming pools and gyms and climbing walls and uh, we've got pretty sporty guys. Yeah. The level of studies, okay. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but... Um, do, you want a, do, you, do you want a school to make you work really hard? Yeah? Do you think you should be sad when you're at school because you're working so hard? No. So, so you want a school that's going to make you... Okay, lots of tough study. Okay, so... If I can summarise, this young lady here I think has put the, hit the nail on the head. She thinks a good school is a school we have to work really hard but you're not sad. Yeah? You work really hard, but you have a good time. Okay? Now, mums and dads. Um, I, I, I don't put questions to you because you're not as smart as these guys. Uh, but I will say that one of the ways you can tell if we're doing our job properly is if your kid comes home from school really tired, but with a smile on their face because they've spent a, a really busy, happy, fruitful day learning. <laughs> yeah, I've made quite a lot to say. How are we doing? It's 10 o'clock, is it? It's, uh, we have the advantage now of having a watch. This. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. Okay, so my name is Neil. I'm the head of school at the OGC campus. And this is Steve, Steve O'Jerry. He's the head of school at this campus right here. And this is his turf, so he gets to go first. Thank you, Neil. Uh, I'm going to stay down here because it's a smaller crowd and it feels a little bit more intimate. So, uh, anybody at the last presentation? Just a couple? Okay, so we'll try to change up the jokes and so nobody gets bored. Um, welcome to OIS. And uh, as Neil said, I'm the head of school at this uh, JPR campus. And um, I always say that if you're about to send somebody out into the Mumbai traffic, the least you can do is to thank them when they arrive. So thank you uh, for joining us on a Saturday. And uh, we know that uh, it's an important thing that we're doing here this morning. So we appreciate you taking the time out of your morning to uh, get the little ones fed and give them, uh, get them into clothing and, and bring them in to hear what we have to say. So thank you for coming. Important question, why are we here? Uh, I can answer this from, from two sides of the equation. Uh, for us, we have uh, what we think is a really great school uh, that we're happy to, uh, to advertise and to talk about. We think there are a lot of great things going on here. And so um, today you're going to hear a very fun, I hope, and engaging presentation about what it is that we do with kids. Um, but also an honest one, because we see this as a very important first opportunity uh, for us to explain what it is that we do based on the idea that we feel that we're offering something that's quite a bit different from the other schools in Mumbai. 
So there's going to be lots of information that we share with you over the course of this hour. And I'll be honest, uh, some of it you're going to sit and you're going to think, this is exactly the environment, this is exactly the education that I want my kid to have. Some things you're going to hear and you're going to think, hmm, I have some questions about that. I'm a little skeptical. Uh, and there will be some things that you'll hear and you'll think these people are crazy. So uh, we're here to address those questions after the presentation. Uh, we're here to share with you uh, as much as we can about what we do, what we believe, um, and how what we do we think is in the best interest of kids. So that's from our perspective. Uh, on your side of the equation, I think you're here for this. Or if you're not, you should be. Um, to try to determine if this is the best fit if this is the best school for your child. You're going to see lots of photos uh, of our school. We love to show it off. You're going to see lots of photos of happy kids, smiling kids, fantastic facilities. If you look around this room, um, this is a very good measure of the quality of facility that we provide to, to kids for their learning, um, both at this campus and at the other campus. But it's not all about that. Um, you have to very closely consider and closely pay attention to the things that we share with you today that have much more to do with who we are, what we believe, and how we think kids best learn. Okay? So with that, let's get started. We refer to these as our guiding statements. Uh, they provide direction for us. The, uh, the vision of the school, the mission, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the core values. The vision is something that's, that's quite easy to um, understand, I think, uh, I believe that all of our students and all of our teachers, if I asked them, they would know the vision by heart. And really what it's about, I think it's probably self-explanatory, but we take the approach that um, we build independence in our kids and we get them to take charge of their own learning. And we start that from a very early age. The mission statement, well, that's a little bit more of a mouthful. Uh, so what I would like to do is just highlight a couple things that I think we can pull from this. One is that we see all of our kids as individuals with individual needs that we work very hard to attend to. In a few minutes, Neil's going to start off his portion to talk about all of the ways in which we work to ensure that our kids are in a very safe environment and that they're provided with a very high level of care while they're under our supervision. Right? Important enough for us to put in the mission statement. A big part of what we do is getting them to think beyond themselves. Right? These are kids, and, and I had some questions about this out in the lobby after the early years presentation. What opportunities will my child have as a result of going here? We believe that the world is going to be their opportunity. Right? And so we start very early on getting them to think beyond themselves and beyond their immediate context and environment. Lots of qualities and characteristics and attributes that you'll hear about uh, over the course of this presentation. These are a few that we think are really important. And finally, uh, there's this idea of student agency, working with them to develop independence, um, to develop responsibility, and to get them to take charge of their own learning. Right? We, we kind of take the attitude that we're not here to, to help raise children, we're here to help raise adults. And we start with that early on. In addition to the vision and mission, there are other things that we believe in. Uh, one of these is the core values. And of course, knowledge is the first one uh, because we're a school and knowledge is important. It should be in there somewhere. But then there's so much more. And, um, and all of these things are things that we emphasize with our kids. And we work with them on developing an appreciation for. I think it's that last one that's, that's the one that makes us special. Uh, we value celebrating accomplishments, be them big or small. We are proudly one school with two campuses, and you'll hear about this a little bit more further on, uh, where our location on one campus or another is probably less important than the fact that we are all OIS students, we're all OIS teachers, we're all OIS families. And so to that end, there, there's lots of sameness. Uh, we use the same guiding statements. We're governed by the same board of trustees and the same foundation. You're learning that we have one admissions process, not one for here and one for up the road. 
We employ the same policies and rules at our, our campuses. We use the same logo. We run the same programs. We even serve the same food. Identical menu for lunch on each campus is day by day. However, there's a couple of differences, and they're worth pointing out to you. One has to do simply with the fact that one of the campuses has been open and running for the last 10 years, and the other campus, the one we're on now, uh, opened just last year. So there's differences in history. There's differences in numbers. Uh, this campus, for example, only goes from nursery to grade eight this year uh, to then include grade nine next year. So we're not quite there yet. Uh, numbers are different. This campus is in a, a full-on growth mode. The campus at OGC is pretty much topped out. So really from grade one on up, if you're applying to OIS, really you're applying to the JVLR campus because that's where the seats are by and large. In case there's any question about how we're going to grow here, uh, we're looking at adding essentially a grade level at a time. So last year when we opened, we were nursery grade four. This year we added five, six, seven, eight. Next year we'll add grade nine, the year after 10 and 11, uh, to the point where by the 21, 22 school year, we'll have all the grade level, levels represented in nursery grade 12. Okay, the other difference I want to point out is differences in the areas of accreditation and program authorization. You may have seen these logos either on our webpage, if you flip over to the back cover of our of the prospectus that you've been handed, uh, you'll see the logos pop up over there, you'll see them pop up inside the prospectus. So these are the organizations through which uh, we have either been accredited across the whole school or uh, by program. I don't want to make it too confusing, so I'm going to keep it brief. The IB logo is probably the one that you see most. And so here's where you find out that the OGC campus is a fully authorized three-program IB school running the PYP, the primary years program in nursery to grade five, the middle years program in grades six to 10, and the diploma program in grades 11 and 12. And that's a process. Typically when a school wants to become authorized to offer a program, they go through a two to three year application process. And you take each program in turn. So very briefly, up at OGC, the diploma program was authorized initially in 2009, and then IB comes back every five years to check up on you. Are you still doing things uh, according to the way we want them to, to see them done? Uh, are the still, kids still getting a quality education within the program? So 2009 authorization, 2014 evaluation, and you see they'll, they'll be back in another year or so. Uh, the primary years program was authorized in 2011, and then evaluated in 2016. The MYP at the OGC campus is the most recent entry, and that was authorized just last spring in, in, uh, in February, March. Well, what about down here? Well, we're not a fully authorized IB World School yet. Uh, we are now in the pipeline. Uh, and so we are going through that two to three year process that I, I told you about a minute ago um, in each of the programs in turn. So last year, we applied to become a PYP candidate school, and we received that approval. So that's where we're at in terms of our timeline. Everything's on track. We're hoping by the middle of the next academic year to become an authorized PYP school. MYP, we just got started this year with the, with the opening of grades six, seven, and eight. So you see that first check mark up there. Uh, we're hoping by December we'll be an official uh, MYP candidate school. And we've already entered the process for the diploma program, where we're now an official DP candidate school. What does this mean for kids, and what does this mean for you? Um, I think actually it doesn't really mean that much for you guys or for your kids. Um, at the JVLR campus, the kids in primary and now in secondary are receiving an IB education. So the teachers are working with the PYP and MYP curriculum frameworks. Um, they, are, they are being assessed according to PYP and MYP guidelines. So that student experience is, is really the same. Um, it's really just for the school. The school has to go through this process with IB uh, of demonstrating that we understand our responsibilities and that we're doing these things. 
The second bit of this is accreditation. Now, these are two external agencies that come in essentially every five years, and they open the books. They take a look at every aspect of our school. Uh, not just the academics that we're offering, but also on the operational side. Do we have qualified staff? Is our, our facility safe? So one is CIS, the Council of International Schools. They're based in Europe. And the other organization is NEASC, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. They're based in the US. And so we're due for a visit in the next, well, an initial visit in a couple months, and then we'll, we'll enter the, that five-year process in the next year or so. The OGC campus is accredited by the College of International Schools and by NEASC, and you can see that distinction on the back cover of your prospectus. The JVLR campus is not, but it's something that we're working toward, and eventually it will be fully accredited by both agencies. Facilities, as I said before, that's usually what hits people the moment they walk in the door, and we're very proud of the facilities that we provide. Um, I'm going to take you through some photos um, and I'm going to ask you to pay attention not just to what you see in terms of the environment, but also what the kids are doing. Because I think it really gives some good insight into what it is that we do um, within our walls and, and what we believe. So this is us on the JVLR campus, a nursery classroom during story time. Uh, look around that nursery classroom and, and just take notice of what you see. Right, the, the way, way the kids, kids are sitting, what's, what's up on the walls, walls what kind of environment uh, we try to create for kids. This is our early years cafeteria on the second floor. It's where the nursery, JKG, and SKG students take their snack every day. So they sit together. It's a social experience for them. The SKG kids, since they're in for a full day, this is where they take lunch. In the early years area, we have a, an early years pool, a wading pool, essentially, where we start to work with them on water confidence. So this is a class that I dropped in on the other day. The kids have their paddle boards. They're fully kitted up, they have everything. Uh, and they're paddling across the, uh, the center of the pool to the teacher on the other side. Lots of play space inside the building, particularly on the early years level. So this is one of our larger play spaces Again, kids engaged in play. Our own version of a Mumbai traffic jam on the left side there. Okay, so lots of spaces, lots of activities going on. An SKG classroom that I dropped in on a couple days ago where kids were working on shapes. Notice the seating arrangement. A kid sitting at single desks? No, and you won't find that throughout the primary. Um, the, the furniture that we use in the classroom promotes a collaborative environment. So kids are sitting together because they're not, not learning in isolation. That's not what we're set up for. We're set up for them to work together, for them to exchange ideas, for them to talk. It's a collaborative endeavor. A PE class on the third floor in one of the open spaces that we have. This is our primary library. Uh, I dropped in there the other day and there were kids doing all different kinds of things. Curled up with a book in one of those round little nooks. Um, two girls, one sitting on the bean bag, um, sketching out something with the other one providing what I assume was commentary. Kids on devices, um, kids reading on their own. So it's a, it's a student-centered, a kid-friendly environment. This is one of our primary art studios. So you'll notice in these photos that we have classroom spaces that are designed to support all of the different elements of our program. So we have dedicated art space for these kids. And again, um, tables where they can sit and work collaboratively. This, uh, these guys were working on their sketch pads. Our um, primary and secondary cafeteria where all of our students from grades one all the way up have their lunch at different times. Um, this was actually a snack time that I dropped in on. And then on the rooftop, you may have seen or heard about the facilities uh, up there. Um, two competition level pools, one a 50 meter pool, the other a 25 meter, not great photos. Um, and then also a turf soccer pitch up there uh, that's able to accommodate our needs. Um, a couple weeks ago, we hosted the middle school team from OGC. They came down and competed against our middle school team here. This, this is, is how you know I can use the panoramic function on my phone. All right, this, this is our gym space. Uh, Full-size gymnasium. Can support lots of different activities. Rock climbing in the far corner over there. 
um, but also things like basketball and badminton and volleyball and pretty much any kind of other game or activity that we need to put on, we can accommodate in the space. Our secondary library, right? Lots of interesting kinds of furniture, different uh, that promote different kinds of interactions between kids. And then finally, some shops from the secondary school. Uh, this is a, a music classroom and kids working on the musical scale with the instruments in the background. One of our um, secondary art studios. All of the classrooms, incidentally, I think this is worth mentioning, are on the exterior of the building. All, right, all of that exterior light that comes in, um, the best spots we reserve for kids. I, I look out the back drive onto the buses. It's not, not really a great view. OK, but again, kids working collaboratively, even in secondary. All right, so kids not working at separate desks, facing front, sitting up straight, but working together. Art, this is drama, kids moving, kids engaged in what's going on. And then over on the left side, I couldn't get a, a shot of um, kids using the science labs, but this is one of our six lab spaces in the secondary school, all very modern, um, state-of-the-art equipment. Um, on the right side, um, some students in a design class that I dropped in on the other day. Yes, working on devices, but even that's a social endeavor. Uh, for this, they were talking about um, designing a, a corporate campaign, um, creating logos to communicate a message. And all of that happens socially, right? Exchanging ideas, giving each other feedback, not done in isolation. And then finally, I'll, I'll end with this before I turn it back over to Neil. Um, I get questions, what's the lunch like? Well, it turns out it's pretty good. Uh, most, most of our kids eat lunch, they don't, I'd say nearly all of them, uh, very few of our kids bring lunch from home. Uh, but again, that environment, clean, um, hygienic, right, and good food to fill young bodies, important for us to do that. Okay? Thank you. Neil, you're back up. I told him not to stray too far over on that side because then this loses its range. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Let me take up on the, uh, the food question. Because what you really need is a world-renowned school food expert. And that's me. I have been eating school lunches for 48 years. And this is the best. I'm a born-again born carnivore. These are vegetarian lunches. I still like them. So, okay. Um, first question, though, before we take your kids here and do all kinds of wonderful things with them, you want to know they're safe, right? That's the most important thing. We can do all our wonderfulness later, but for now, let's just make sure they're safe. Um, I think it's a rule in Mumbai that schools have to have some sort of medical personnel. We do. We have two fully trained nurses full time up at the OGC campus, one fully trained nurse full time down here, one fully qualified doctor, splits the time between the two campuses. We have the best school buses I've seen around here, uh, probably the most expensive, but you get what you pay for. Uh, they've all got seatbelts for every kid. Uh, they've got GPS, and no, you can't track the buses. We can, but you can't. Because if we let you track them, then bad people can. We don't want that. CCTV if we need it. They've all got staff. I travel on the school bus with the kids quite regularly. and. Uh, and I sit up straight and I make sure I've got my uh, seatbelt done up because I've got to upset that diddy. Um, our security personnel is also outsourced, but we make sure we have the same personnel year after year after year. They're our people. We have them on every floor. I forget how many security people we've got. It's lots. They're very well trained. They're very capable, very professional. They're on every floor. But more than that, they're our people, we've trained them, they play on our staff so uh, cricket team, they dance in our happy video, they're part of our family and they look after our kids, it's personal. And we have these things. Uh, on each campus we have more than 400 high quality CCTV cameras and I make sure everybody knows that whatever happens anywhere in the school, if I choose to, I can see it. So, kids are going to be safe. Okay, let's talk now about the purpose of education. 
because I heard one parent say before, well, this is an IB school, and I've been to lots of IB schools. Uh, they're, they're not all the same. Uh, some are quite different. We are different. We are different to lots of schools in Mumbai. We base everything we do on respect. Um, we shut the gate at 7.45 in the morning and don't let kids in after that because we want them to respect their school enough to turn up on time. And we want parents to set the same example. Parents start wandering in 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes later. That's the story their kids get. Okay? It's about respect. Now, the purpose of education has changed a little bit because for many parents, there still seems to be a fixation about the connection between education and career training, which used to be quite a, uh, quite a valuable one, uh, quite a, uh, uh, an authentic one. Not anymore. Not anymore. When you ask kids uh, what they're going to do with their life, their, their, their answer is going to be probably a lot of things. Uh, the idea used to be that if you were good at school and worked hard, then you got to go to university, and then you got a good job. And that was the objective. School, work hard, good grades, go to university, get a degree, you're set. You've got a good job. Whereas, if you didn't work hard in school, if you were bad at school, then you got bad grades, you didn't go to university, you got an ordinary job, you didn't get a good job. And the ordinary job is probably working for that guy. That's how it used to work, right? Not anymore. Don't you love the look on that little guy's face? Is he trying hard or what? 27% of recent graduates from United States universities are currently working in a profession which is related to what they studied at university. So 73%, I'm a math teacher, 73% of kids who went to a degree in university are now working at something entirely different. So even at university level, it's not career training. It's education. And look at the jobs they're doing now. You know, we've been saying for ages that uh, our kids will be applying for jobs that haven't been invented yet. And there's more and more coming up all the time. We're familiar with um, companies having a CEO. I think I'm sort of like a CEO. Uh, some schools have a CEO as the chief education officer. Uh, there's a CFO, the chief financial officer, a COO. Have you ever heard of a CMO? That's the chief media officer. An uh, increasingly important part of a, an organization. Uh, social media strategist. Uh, imagine being the CMO for a company uh, who produces body organs. Yeah, there's a lot more out there than there used to be. So, yeah, your kids are still pretty small. What sort of jobs are they going to be applying for? I have no idea. I have a very small part of an idea. I think the jobs your kids are going to be applying for are the jobs that can't be done by a machine. That's about as close as I can get. I can't be more specific than that. When I first came to India five years ago, uh, I got the impression that success meant doctor or engineer. Doctor, preferably surgeon. That was kind of every parent's dream, wasn't it? That your kid becomes a doctor. Have you seen a surgeon lately? That's a surgeon. Increasingly so. Growing very rapidly in America. And which country is the second fastest growth in robotic surgery? India. The world is changing, my friends. Education is no longer career training. Here's a little exercise for you to do. You're sitting here with your kids. You've got such hopes and dreams and aspirations. I still do, my kid's 31 now. You've got all these dreams. You want them to be, to be happy, you want them to have enough money, you want them to be a respected leader who's important in the community, be nice if they married the right person, you want them to be good, good people. All these things you want for your kids. 
Okay, okay. If, if you could, could only have two. two. I want you to sit there and choose two. The two non-negotiables. The two that you can't let go. Out of all of those, you can only have two. And you're going to... Have you made your mind up? Yeah? Let me show you what you picked. Yeah? Because that's what's important. Everything else can follow from that. Education should reflect that. This is what we do. If you, come, if you come to this school, I guarantee pretty well every session that I run with parents, that slide will come up at some stage. And if you're a parent, that's a really scary slide. Because there's a lot on there. And you'll notice in the one, two, three, fourth line down, it begins with exam score. Yes, your exam score is there. But it's one small component out of everything else. Because if, if exam score is all we do, your kids are at a huge disadvantage. You know, if your kid passes out of the IB with a perfect score and nothing else, that's child abuse. Many schools say to parents, particularly in Mumbai, most schools I think say to parents, drop your kid off in the morning, pick them up in the afternoon, and butt out. Don't get involved. We know what we're doing. We're the experts here. Right? Just leave your kid with us. We know what we're doing. Don't interfere. We don't say that. We say, we know more about pedagogy and learning and curriculum than you do. Please don't try and advise us on that. But you know more about your kid than I ever will. So we need to get those two bodies of knowledge together. We need to teach you so that you understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. So that you can help support what we do in the home. We think you're really important. And this is why. Your children spend a total of 15% of the year in school. One five. Seven hours a day, 186 days a year is 15% of their year. 33% of the year, they're fast asleep, I hope. If your kids don't get enough sleep, they don't learn. But what about the 52%? That's yours. That's why we think you're important. We need that 52% working on the same things that we're working on. We need you and us to believe in what we're doing and why and to work together to achieve it. Together we can do a lot. But us with our 15%, Without your help, we can't really do it. We want you to believe in what we do. We want you to believe that education is for life. We educate your kids for the next 50 years to take their place in the world. Education is not just for a number at the end. We do not focus on top exam. We get top exam results, but that's not our focus. Our focus is on producing awesome people. And what we found over the years is that those awesome people also get top exam results. We don't want you to be spectator parents. We want you to participate. We want you to be a part of this journey. Because your children are going through a wonderful, exciting, fantastic journey. And we want you to be a part of it. Because that's why you have kids, isn't it? To share in the joy. We want you to support us. And the very best way you can support us is by reading that again and again and again until it's ingrained in your memory and setting an appropriate example. Please do this. Please work with us. Please don't work around us. Please work with us. Please set the sort of example that we want you to set for your children. Please don't ever say to your son, I know you're tired. I'll phone the school and tell him you've got a fever. Please don't ever do that. We're not that sort of school. We want you to be open and honest and work with us in a, in a partnership. We think kids should be happy. We think it's, it's the basic human right of, of childhood. It should be happy most of the time. 
we think that happy kids learn better than unhappy kids. So we want to keep them happy, and we want you to help us keep them happy. And we want you to let them play. Let them be kids. Accept the fact that your child is perfect. Your child is more perfect than the child of any other person in this auditorium. So is mine. Your kids are perfect. Please stop improving them. Please stop with them. We don't want them... Well, when, when our kids leave school, we want them to go and play and discover and communicate and create and do things. We want them to get bored. I don't want kids to leave school here and have an hour of Taekwondo followed by an hour of Mandarin Chinese followed by an hour of chess followed by another hour of chess because chess is really, really important. Followed by maths, followed by Kumon, followed by this. We want them to be kids. We want them to play. Okay, we want you to trust us enough that we will work with you in this incredibly exciting journey. And it does stay exciting. At least up to age 31. It's still exciting. I can't speak for beyond that. Okay, that's me. I'm two minutes late, but so is he, so it's not my fault. Uh, who's next? Tony. This is Tony. He's the head of the primary division at, um, at OGC. I used to be the director of the International School of Dusseldorf. I hired Tony as the primary principal there, and I hired him again here at Overy. He's that good. Good morning. So you've had an American, and you've had an Australian, and now you have a Kiwi. And it's great to see so many of you here this morning. Uh, Steve and Neil have spoken to you more globally about the school. This is now the time when me, Tony, as the head of primary at um, OGC Canvas, and Lisa, who is our head of primary here at the JBR Canvas, our opportunity to hone down a little bit more about what it's like for Nursery, JKG, and SKG. How many of you are looking at uh, or are here today because you're looking at a place for the nursery. Okay, oh, okay. For JKG. For senior kindergarten. For older than that? Yeah. For how many of you is the child that you're thinking about for this, uh, for the school, the first child that you have? Okay, so, second, third, <laughs> fourth, okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> um, how many of you are already parents of OAs? Okay, so quite a few of you. Great. <coughs> So we're going to be talking a little bit more now in depth about nursery and junior and senior kindergarten. Later on we're going to do that, so we'll skip over that. And you've heard this morning a lot about the, uh, that we are one school, but we just happen to be on two different campuses. Lisa and I both as uh, heads of our primary divisions uh, talk a lot together. We meet regularly and we talk about learning and what's happening in our campuses and what's happening with the learning uh, for the students. At the moment, our campuses look like this. And you can see that from the top parts, it's, it's pretty similar. Eight grades at both, both campuses uh, because the um, uh, Garden City campus has been going for, for a bit longer. Uh, there are more students here at the moment, but we do have four classes at nursery and we have five classes at JKG. And right now we have at um, the OGC campus six classes at JKG through to grade five. And on this campus here we have three and further up in the primary area too, 
but building uh, on that, and that's where there is the, uh, I guess, a greater room for, for growth. So we are an International Baccalaureate School, which you've already heard, and we offer the Primary Years Programme. And Lisa's going to talk a lot more about that uh, in a few minutes. So what are we all about? We're about the Primary Years Programme of the International Baccalaureate, and that is our reason for being. We follow the framework of the Primary Years Programme and we then look at the curriculum that is going to best suit our children within that framework. We're all about learning and how to learn. And we're all about having fun. And you could see in all of those photos before how much fun uh, the children were having. And we're all about learning together as teams, learning collaboratively, which is why our furniture is not what you might see perhaps or remember when you were at school, when maybe the desks were in rows and they were facing the front to a teacher who was standing up the front in front of a whiteboard or a blackboard uh, telling you what you needed to learn. We know that that's not how learning works any longer. So having furniture which allows for collaboration, arranging groups, looking at flexible teaching and flexible spaces with flexible groupings of students is the way to go. Collaboration is, is one of the big things that we focus on. And it's really important for us that when the children arrive with us in nursery that we are focusing on them as being lifelong learners which is exactly what we, as the faculty, are as well. It's important to us that we are also lifelong learners. So this is my opportunity now to be a bit of a mind reader. I'm sure you've come with a number of questions that you want answered. And I wonder if any of these are the questions that you might have. length of the day. So you had to be here at for an 8.30 start. And your children, clearly it's training me to be closer isn't it, to, the, to the laptop. Yeah, so your children need to be in school before 7.45 in the morning. Yeah, there's a few gulps here. You have to be up quite early, and so do they. Uh, classes for nursery and JKG finish at 12.15, and then you come <coughs> on and pick them up and take them home for the afternoon. In January, we start looking at extending the day for our junior kindergarten students. Firstly, one day a week, then a second day, and then a third day. And we work on an eight-day cycle. The children find the eight-day cycle works really well. Parents find it really hard to, to get their head around it. We don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight. It doesn't take you long to get used to it, though. Um, but listen to what the children say because they're, they're the best at it. In Senior kindergarten, again, they start at the same time, but they finish like everyone else does at 2.50. There are after school activities, a limited number for them because they've had such a, a long day, they're young still, so there are not as many offered uh, activities offered as extracurricular activities, but if they do participate in one, then it takes them through to about 10 past four. And again, they work on that eight-day cycle. You've heard the answer to this, so you don't really need much explanation. Except that nursery and JKG don't have a cooked lunch. Because they've gone home. You feed them at home. They do bring a snack, 
during the day and they have a snack time when they can have a break to have something to eat and drink. But uh, from SKG, the great fine Esseros, and you've um, seen the amazing photos, and that's why I'm like this. It didn't used to be like this until I came here. Yeah, if you believe that. Um, class sizes. Uh, I don't know what the class sizes that you might be thinking of, maybe 25, 30, lower. For us, we try to keep our nursery ratio from the teacher, the classroom, homeroom teacher, to the group of students that they have, to around about 16. It might be a bit less and it might be a bit more. In JKG, we increase the number and then in senior kindergarten and right through the rest of the school, uh, we look at trying to keep our class to the homeroom teacher, the groupings of the homeroom teacher, around about uh, 20. You know the answer to this, yes we do, and they are outsourced. At the beginning of the year, I think it's a really good idea that you bring your students to school, particularly if they're three-year-olds and four-year-olds. If you have the choice, I guess, but it's really good for you to be able to bring them, settle them in, rather than just send them off and uh, hoping that things are going to go okay. They will, but much easier when mum and dad are there. Well, I wonder what the answer to this is. Who thinks no? Who thinks yes? Who thinks they really don't know, clearly? Um, so the answer to that is no. We don't test the students. It's really important for us, though, to know where they're at. And so we are doing lots of assessments all the way through. Um, every now and then it might be just with, a, with an individual and we're trying to work out now how's that going for, for this particular child? What's going to be the next step that we're ready to move them on to? But do we sit down and do a formal test? No, we don't. Yes, we do. And we use our local environment a lot to take our children out. Uh, and when they get to grades three, four, and five, we head out a little bit further out of town, round about um, two hours away from, from the campuses, and uh, we have overnight camps. Yes, we do, but not in a nursery and not in JKG, and not in senior kindergarten. But we do from grade one and up. From grade one and up, every child has daily Hindi classes. And from grades three, four, and five, we introduce them to French and Spanish. The language of tuition at the school is English. And we use the host country language, and I know that there are lots and lots of host country languages here in India, but we've chosen Hindi as the one that we want to go with. We also have Marathi as an after school activity, um, and children can sign up for that as well. <coughs> Lisa. Morning, parents. Gosh, you're good listeners. I hope your children are listen as well as you do. Do they? <laughs> um, so we've had an American man, we've had an Australian man, a Kiwi or a bird from, I don't know where are you from, New Zealand. Uh, I'm from Wales. Many, many, many years ago, I left 20 years ago, so I'm, I'm a woman, obviously. I also get the privilege of being a parent. Um, I have two children, and as well as being the head of primary here at the JBLR campus, I have a daughter in SKG, and I have a son in grade five. So I know what it's like to wear the parent hat. I'm um, just curious, um, parents, how many of you are thinking of putting your child in school for the very first time? 
this, this will be the very first time. It's, it's a, a big, big decision, decision, right? You're, you're trusting an organization to look after your little one, one your most precious one. It's, it's a really big decision, decision and you've already made that first step today, so welcome to our school. I want to start a little bit by telling you about the program that we offer here. Now, let's be real about this. I cannot explain the primary years program in 15 minutes. So after this session today, I really encourage you to go off and do some research and find out what it means for your children at this age level. It's very different. And that's what I've learned from our parents. What we offer here is very different from what you're used to, but also from what uh, some of our students are used to, too. So I'm going to start by showing a very short video. Um, I want you to look at the keywords. This is from the IB. And it's all about early years and what we focus on with the little ones. Lots of acronyms today. Yes, OIS, JBLR, OGC, PYP, MYP, DP. We like acronyms. Um, make sure you find out what those acronyms start for, stand for. So, what we look at with our primary years program, the PYP, it's been going for over 20 years. It's a well established program. And let's be clear about this it's not British, it's not American. Um, it's taken in the best programs from around the world and it's been going for a very, very long time. There are thousands of schools that follow this program. But the aim of all the IB programs is to develop internationally minded children. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that the children learn about just cultures and traditions and celebrations. It actually means they become lifelong learners. They're looking at being caring and knowledgeable. You'll learn about this as you find out more about um, the PYP. So, as was said earlier, OGC um, campus has been authorized to teach the PYP since 2011. And right now, at this campus, we are going through the candidacy phase. And I've been overseas for 18 years, and this is my sixth international school. And all the schools I've worked in have been PYP. This school is way beyond where we need to be. And I'm quite proud of all the teachers and the students and how they've come along this journey. Considering we're a new campus here, we really are doing well with the program. 
but I need the parents to know, I need you guys to know that we are in the candidacy phase of the primary years program. So you'll see this model everywhere. This is um, an IB model of the primary years program. We talked a little bit about knowledge earlier. Knowledge is important, um, but so are these other essential elements. Conceptual understanding, skills, attitude, and action. They're called essential elements. It's not just knowing that two plus two is four. It's understanding the different ways that you can make four. And I went into a JKG class a couple of weeks ago one of my favorite age groups to go in and see the children at work. And they were all drawing shapes, 2D shapes, on whiteboards. And some of them were making it with Play-Doh and painting. And these children, very young children, they knew circles and triangles and squares and rectangles. They knew that already. So I went over to a group and said to them, hmm, what are you doing? The children looked at me, we're drawing shapes. And I looked at the teacher and said, I don't know what a shape is. What is a shape? The teacher gave me a very odd look. And one of the students said, Miss Lisa, you're the boss of the school. I think you know what shapes are. I said, no, I really don't know how to define what a shape is. So they started drawing circles and triangles and rectangles and squares. And that told me as a teacher that they had the knowledge, right? They knew the names. They knew how to draw them. But what, what we wanted, wanted to take it to the next level was, was that conceptual understanding. So I grabbed a whiteboard and I drew a very abstract shape. I'm not a very good artist. It looked a little bit like a car and a train. And they looked at it and I said, so is this a shape? And the children looked at the board. And one of the children grabbed the board off me and said, this is a shape. And he divided my shape into triangles and parallelograms and rhombuses and um, rectangles and squares. And that told me that that child had knowledge that he didn't know that he had, but he understood the concepts of shape. So it's really hard to explain to you today that conceptual understanding of ideas. Yes, we do the knowledge, of course we do the knowledge, but the concept is much bigger than the knowledge. And of course, the skills, attitudes, and action, it's all about collaboration. It's all about how do the children learn all this stuff. We do not stand there and sermon and preach at the children. We do not use textbooks or worksheets. We do not have homework. We really allow the children to explore with their peers and the teachers who are the facilitators about their um, knowledge of different topics. And I wanted, I wanted to, to show you some, some videos. videos. This, this was big learning for me. Um, I came here last year. And, and one of the things, things I like to do as a parent is find out where are our parents, parents coming from. from. These, These parents have been in the school a year. And they, they did, did a workshop. workshop. We do lots of workshops for parents. Um, we recently did an inquiry workshop. And, and these parents left some testimonials at the end of the session about what they understand about PYP. So I've got three short, very short videos that you can have a look at. Hi, um, thank you so much for organizing this workshop. It really gives um, um, a peek into um, what and how our children are learning. And so uh, it's really interesting to see uh, that there is uh, not just uh, knowledge which, uh, which, is, you know, which they are figuring out by doing their own research, uh, but there is a lot of reflection, a lot of collaboration which is going into it. And uh, uh, further, uh, I think that at, at this earlier age, uh, to be able to understand um, different viewpoints, uh, be able to uh, uh, listen to each other, uh, becoming uh, more uh, tolerant to each other's views, and, uh, uh, yeah, and just uh, understand that people have different ideas and that gives uh, them and uh, you know, uh, it opens up the world for them and it also um, um, uh, makes them, I feel, over a period of time, a lot more compassionate, 
uh, kind of uh, open mindedness and uh, also to understand that there is no right and wrong, there are different ways to look at things and uh, to not always have all the answers but to be able to uh, go through different viewpoints and uh, be able to uh, you know, uh, see them is really important and um, I think that's what the work of all we need to do and uh, thank you so much for really me a lot of difference to uh, my understanding of the way uh, you like me. Christine and uh, the OIC for closing this workshop with us. I think what I picked up today is uh, the IT learning style is very collaborative. There's a lot of research involved and what I like the most about it is that uh, instead of giving a very made set of things for students to learn, they're encouraged or they're provoked to think and reflect on their learnings. I really liked uh, the exercise that we did at the beginning of saying, see, think, and wonder. I think we all try to do it in one way. Uh, but it seems I will be able to have distinguish from that. So the children are a lot more observant and apply a lot more thinking uh, in whatever they are doing. So thank you so much. I uh, look forward to coming back. interesting with the parents. Like I said, we do lots of parent workshops throughout the year and you will get, um, if you're successful at our school, the 
you'll get the opportunity to find out more and more about the program. I'm just going to quickly slide because I'm aware of the time. We really do a play-based learning for our little ones. And let's be clear, there's no difference between work and play. The children don't just come in and play on swings and slides and get messy in the sandpit. They're actually working at the same time. So you'll hear play-based learning. In our early years, we do four units of inquiry, or UOI, as they're called. Um, we have to do who we are, we have to do how we express ourselves, and we choose to do two more, depending on um, where the children are at. These four units in our early years, and six units for SKG, really explore big ideas. Families, relationships, friendships, creativity, how we express ourselves. And um, when you find some research online, what you'll discover is through, within these units, all these subjects are covered. And they're not covered separately, they're actually covered together. And we call that a transdisciplinary program. So inquiry-based, asking questions. How many of you at home, when your child asks you a question, because that's all they do at this age, right? You don't have to give them the answer. You have to wonder why they're thinking those questions and wonder why they're asking you those questions. It's all about curiosity. In each of those units, they work through an inquiry cycle. We find out what they know, what they want to know, and what their passions are. Teachers don't teach everybody the same way. Very different depending on where the children are at. Like I said earlier, we're a concept based program, so it's all about understanding, not just knowledge. And collaborative learning, I'm sure you've heard that word many, many times this morning, yes? Children are not learning by themselves, they're learning from each other and with each other. So the role of the teacher is really to facilitate that learning. And we, we like, like to use the word facilitator rather than teacher. The teachers do an incredible amount of hard work planning for these units, incredible. But there's only so much you can plan because the children have to tell us what they know and what they want to find out. So the teacher provides the role as a motivator or a meddler in the middle. That's one of my favorite um, phrases. So a couple of last slides. This is what we do as a school. Okay, we really look at developing lifelong learners and promoting student agency. So it's all about empowering students and for students to take responsibility for their own learning. What do we want our families to be? And there was a long list, it was really hard to choose. And going back to Neil's slide at the beginning, the red slide, the slide he likes to keep showing. There's a lot of things that you can do, but for us in primary, for early years, these three things are really, really important. Okay? I'm going to stop there. I'm very conscious of time. I am sure you have many, many questions. We are not going to take questions today, but we will be outside in the lobby. Um, the whole team will be, if you want to ask us specific questions, okay? I'm going to hand over to admissions. Okay. Good. Thank you for coming. And thank you for being good listeners. And I'm sorry you had to sit for such a long time. We don't do that to our children, right? We have lots and lots of movement with our children. Thank you very much for coming this morning. Lots of things for you to think about, I'm hoping. And like I said, we'll be in the lobby if you have any specific questions to ask us. And thank you, team. Thank you for coming, thank you. Email ID. Uh, please feel free to email admissions if you have any further questions about the next steps, the process, the timeline, any sorts of questions. Please, please feel free to email us, okay? Thank you.